Hello, founders. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to calculate Tam Sam Som according to Taylor Swift. Now, before you run in the opposite direction, full disclosure, this is not a Taylor Swift fan club video. I'm not going to profess my love or that I'm a closet Swifty. Truth be told, I have never listened to a Taylor Swift song from beginning to end. I might have heard clips here and there in commercials. Obviously, she's super popular. You can't go anywhere without knowing who Taylor Swift is. Seems like these days, I can't even watch football without Taylor Swift coming up, right? But I was helping a founder the other day calculate their Tam Sam Som, and I began thinking about a better way to teach it. And I did some research, and I was actually looking up coulda, woulda, shoulda, and I found out that Taylor Swift has a song, coulda, woulda, shoulda, and so I watched a clip of that, and here we are. I thought it'd be a great way to teach this video. Before we continue, my name is Ed Kang. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am a seven-time funded founder, two-time exits, which basically means I failed a bunch of times for your benefit because I like to use all my social media to help founders avoid some of the catastrophic mistakes that I've made during the early stages, especially pre-seed or seed fundraising. It's not that you're not going to make mistakes, but I can at least try and help you reduce the cost of those mistakes, how painful and how much heartache that you're going to get, because this journey is hard enough. So again, welcome if you haven't met me before. Thank you very much for checking this out. Let's jump right into the video. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. This is Taylor Swift's song. The content of this song is irrelevant. It's about... I think heartbreak or breakup or something like that. But let me show you what could have, would have, should have basically means for your Tam Sam Som. Could have is your Tam, would have is your Sam, and should have is your Som. This is not a video about Tam Sam Som. If you don't know what Tam Sam Som is, then I suggest that you do yourself a favor and you go out and you research it. We don't have time to break it down here, but you're most likely coming here because you've heard you got to do Tam Sam Som and you don't know how to calculate it. And that's what this video is going to do. We're going to help you out. We're going to use could have, would have, should have to explain Tam Sam Som. The first step in this journey is that I have to set the context and tell you what startup we're calculating the Tam Sam Som for. I came up with this just literally minutes ago. This is my fake pitch for my fake startup. And my pitch is our app delivers video lessons video lessons based on Taylor Swift songs to help fans find romantic partners. We charge a $10 annual subscription fee. Just straightforward. I'm pitching investors. I have an app. We make video lessons based on Taylor Swift songs to help fans find romantic partners. And we charge $10 a year for using our app. Okay, straightforward. Now that you have the context, we can start to look at the logic of how I'm going to calculate Tam Sam's song. So if we've got Tam, Tam is could have. And basically what Tam means is that if everybody that could buy or pay for your product did so, this is how much money we could make. That's everybody. Sam is in essence, if we focus on this type of demographic or this segment, because our business model lends to itself and we basically go after a portion of the TAM because it's the focus that we need to have, we're well suited for it, then we would make this money. And obviously it's gonna be less than your TAM. SOM is what is realistic. What I'm saying is that if we get the investment and execute our go-to-market strategy and our plan and our assumptions are proven true, realistically, we should make this amount of money. Let me repeat, TAM is if everybody bought, who could buy, did buy from us, we could make this amount of money and it's gonna be a lot of money. And then SAM is if we focus and implement, we would make this money. And SOM is, realistically speaking, if we execute because of our go-to-market strategy and different parts of our business model, we realistically should make this amount of money. Now, let me back up for a second here and explain that some investors, if they're startup investors, need to see your tab in billions of dollars. If your investor is like a friend's family and associate investor, maybe a rich uncle, and you say, my TAM is billions of dollars, they may get intimidated. So we're going to talk about how you make adjustments, but just keep in mind that the context of the investor, your audience, the type of investor is going to make a big difference in how you calculate this, because I could really blow these numbers up as you will start to see, but I need to get to a story that makes sense for investors. Let's continue. So with my TAM, I'm going to say that my TAM is 276 million followers of Taylor Swift songs. That's my TAM. Now, I could go even bigger, but I'm going to say 
Taylor Swift has 276 million fans on Instagram. So we're going to start there. That's my total addressable market. Next, though, is that if I focus, because my business model uses video, it's better for me to focus on the 55 million that are on YouTube. Because guess what? I'm going to be delivering my marketing advertising, my go to market strategy is going to be based on creating a YouTube channel and putting out little previews or snippets and saying, hey, for the full video, subscribe to my app or something like that. I don't know. Like I said, I just made this business up. So I'm just kind of going on the fly here. So that's 55 million potential users of my app because there are 55 million that are on YouTube. Makes a lot of sense. Here's the logic. Next is my psalm. Now, I'm going to say, based on me as the founder and the types of videos that I'm going to put out, if I execute properly and everything goes according to plan, there are 26 million men out of that 55 million that are on YouTube. How did I get there? YouTube didn't give me that information. Well, I did some research, and it's easy for me to look up how many Taylor Swift fans there are on Instagram and how many she's got subscribed to her YouTube channel because I can target them with YouTube ads. And I can say anytime someone comes in there, uh, um, uh, a guy on Taylor Swift channel, I want them to see my ad for this app. And so because my content is going to be geared for men, it'll be 26 million because I found out that there are 48% of the entire Taylor Swift fandom adults who are in my market are men. So what I did is I took 55 million. What's 48% of men in that? That's 26 million men. This is my logic. So you see how my Tam Sam song got adjusted to my startup and what I intend to do because I'm painting the story. I want to de-risk the investment to show the investor that I am an expert in this. I've taken the time to really think this through. And if you give me enough money, give me the money I'm asking for, I should be able to implement this. And what do the numbers look like? Well, at $10 a month, or $10 a year, that's my subscription, 276 million times 10 is 2.76 billion. We're in startup country here. Now I could have said how many people have ever listened to a Taylor Swift song or how many people are pop music fans or how many people want to be in a relationship and go online looking for love. That's gonna be way too big. I need to have this make sense. And like I said, show the investor, I know how to think about this because that's gonna give the investor confidence. With this calculation, it's easy to figure out what my SAM is, is 55 million times 10, which is 550 million. That's still a lot. So I go to my SOM, 26 million men, that's 260 million. Now, even if I do half of that, that's still 130 million. And that puts me in unicorn territory. If I'm going to a startup investor, they want to see unicorns. Your TAM needs to be in the billions and you should be able to make at least 100 million a year, which at a 10X multiple revenue, if you're gonna get listed publicly, that is a unicorn, a billion dollar company. That's what investors want to see. Now, that may change because the landscape is changing, but I'm just using the old gospel of how we figured out unicorns. If your SOM is so much of the TAM, let's say I said 2.76 billion and my, my um, SOM was half of all the followers on Instagram and I was in the basically 1.38 billion a year revenue, nobody's going to believe that because I better have a darn good go-to-market strategy to be able to reach 50% of all Instagram followers. Like you can't spend enough money to convert to half of 276 million from Instagram onto your app. Now, the fact that 260 million is a, a fraction of 2.76 billion, well, guess what? That makes it more believable and the rest of my business plan is going to support or rest of my pitch is going to support me showing the investor that I'm capable of making this happen, especially if I already have traction and I've got metrics that I can extrapolate from and give them confidence that I've already been doing this. So there's your TAM SAM That's what would go on your TAM SAM slide. Simple as that. But what if this is too complicated? Let's move on and let me give you some best practices on what you should be thinking about. Here's a review. First, do bottom up. You don't want to be going, well, the pop industry, pop music industry is $1 trillion. And if we make 1% of that, we're all going to be majorly rich. And according to this report from Gardner or Deloitte or Bain Consulting, right? I see this happen all the time. The cybersecurity industry is $13 trillion and all those things. That's just lazy. You're not showing the investor that you're an expert and you know how to go out and research these things. You just pulled a report off Google and you threw it in your pitch deck. That's not going to work. So the fact that I say I'm going to start off not with all of everybody who listens to pop music or anybody who's ever listened to Taylor Swift song, I'm gonna bottom up, I'm gonna go start with Instagram. Wherever you are looking, you wanna make sure that you go bottom up and get the data and show the logic, which gets to the next part, you're building a story. So I may say there are 276 million Taylor Swift fans and people go, yeah, why are you mentioning that big of a market? 
Well, I'm telling the story. That's where I started. I use my logic, and because I am a formidable founder, I know how to think about this. I'm going to start at 276 million Instagram followers for a reason because I can target them. Social media is easy, etc. And guess what? All the people there are, you know, pining for relationships. I don't know. You know, something along those lines. So I'm going to tell the story, and I work down the logic in a story format, a narrative. That makes the investor go, oh, yeah, it's a huge market, but you're focusing on this market and realistically should make that. Do I believe you? By that time, they're talking themselves into the investment because you're giving them so much great information about how amazing you are and how competent. That means you have to show the math. So show the math and give them the story in a math equation format. So you see how I did it. I said 276 million followers. I got that from Instagram times $10 a year. This is how much it worked. That's a bottom up calculation. Show that math. I love it when founders show their math because then I can get in their heads and say, hey, have you looked at it this way? And what if it goes that way? And et cetera, et cetera. I can start working with the founder if they show the math versus they just pulled a number out of thin air and they made their growth graph, their projections go up and to the right like a hockey stick. Nobody believes that. That just doesn't happen. It never happens that way. Like it's always like a little bumpy road and there's dips and the trough of sorrow and all those things. So if you're just pulling numbers arbitrarily out of the sky, well, then I'm going to think that you're a founder that makes decisions like that. And that's how you're going to be treating my money. So show the math, show that you are thoughtful and willing to do the research. Finally, simplify investors. Remember, I said startup investors are sophisticated, right? If you're talking to a VC or what have you, but if you're pre-seed or seed, well, it's like you're starting to friends, family, and associate investors that aren't used to looking at Tam Sam Som slides, right? So if they don't know what Tam Sam Som is, don't show them. Don't put any more friction in their brains and make them do any more work so that either they get intimidated or they say, you know what? I've got like 10 other people who want me to invest in them because I got rich with Bitcoin or I just sold a bunch of houses or I have like 30 Airbnbs and I happen to have some discretionary cash sitting around that can YOLO into startups. Simplify for them and just get them what they need. What happens is you can have the Tam Sam song slide, but let me give you another example that you could be using. And it's all going to be based on your preference and who you're working with. I may have a slide like this. There are 276 million Swifties on social media. We will focus on the 26 million male fans that follow on YouTube, which would be 260 million a year in revenue. That's simple at $10 a pop per year. Meanwhile, I'm explaining and they go, well, how did you get to that? Well, it's very simple because one male fans, I'm a guy follower. I'm a male myself, and there are a whole bunch of other, you know, genders that people can identify with. I'm not there to argue that. That's just the math that I'm using because I am a cisgender, heterosexual male. Then I'm going to appeal to that because I'm the founder. I'm the one creating the videos and running the company. So they're going to relate to me. It's a problem that maybe I tried to solve and I experienced with the problem. Maybe Taylor Swift songs really helped me through a rough patch in romantic relationships, help boost my dating life. I don't know. Remember, fake startup, so I'm making all this stuff up as I go. But now I want to use video, and so I know that the ones on YouTube are used to watching video, and I can target them on YouTube. On YouTube, I can target them watching any Taylor Swift video, and that they're male. YouTube allows me to do that. So based on this, I think I can make $260 million a year if I fully accomplish my business plan. And even if I do half of that, it's 130 million investors will basically be able to do that math. So there you go. Notice how I took Tam Sam Som, which might be too complicated, and I simplified how you calculate it, and I put it in this format so you can communicate with investors. The point is, learn to do your Tam Sam Som. I know some advisors and other investors, they all have opinions. We all have different opinions on what you go into your pitch deck. I'm just telling you stuff that's worked for me and that I enjoy doing that forces me to do the work and really understand my startup because you need to know your numbers. But you can use Tam Sam Som as the base math. If you're going to do like nuclear physics or everything like that, you need to do basic algebra. If you're going to be playing or improvise and you're playing jazz piano, you need to know your basic classic piano scales. Learn to do Tam Sam Som properly so that you at least have the foundation of numbers so that you can start to get creative and do what you need to to communicate with investors so you can raise that almighty first check your pre-seed or seed funding. I hope that was helpful. Just a different way to look at Tam Sam Som. Do the social media thing, like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment. It really helps. I appreciate all the support that I'm constantly getting. It's been fantastic as of late. If you are joining me and you're part of any of our accelerator programs or online communities, been in any of my workshops, or I'm working with you directly, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. That's it for this one. I hope to see you in the next video.